knight f3 was played, and queen takes a1, and the opponent resigned in seven moves. Welcome back to the Chesky channel. Today we are covering the Borg defense. I was researching this defense online and I saw someone who lives by this defense saying that if black executes this properly, no can defend. Luckily, they also mentioned the strategical ideas behind this opening, writing, and I quote, the goal here is like a flipped reverse Sicilian. White walks right into the trap and black can het end game for a bishop. The knights move forward, and white will try probably a whole lot of advancement advantage fast, but loses a tempo in black attacking side of the center, then is downfall. So there you have it. That is everything that you need to know to tackle this defense. You have the strategical ideas, the mastermind ideas behind this def Okay, of course, I'm joking. What was actually interesting, though, Using chessvision.ai, a tool I made a video on, link is in the description, I inputted Borg Defense and I saw a ton of videos that uh, people, very high rated people, play this defense with, especially if you look here, Hikaru has a game with this defense. So the game plan for today is we're going to look at that Hikaru Nakamura game, we're going to, through that game, show you the ideas, strategical plans of this opening. I'm also going to show you the improvements the opponent could have played because they lose quite quickly. Uh, and against those improvements, I'll show you our plans, ideas, and moves, so you really do get a full coverage of this opening from both sides. But right before we jump in to the Hikaru game, one quick ask. 80% of the people that are watching this video are not subscribed, so if you're not subscribed, please hit that sub button. It's free, takes a second, and really helps out the channel. And with that, let's begin. The interesting thing is, I've seen people classify the Borg as e4, g5, and I've also seen d4, g5 as the Borg. So what we're going to classify it as for the sake of this video is white getting both pawns e4, d4, and us getting g5 and bishop g7 in, okay? So it doesn't really matter the order in the particular game we're looking at. It started with e4, g5, and now d4, bishop g7. So what's the whole point? Because we're just giving away a pawn as Hikaru's opponent gladly took. Well, we're playing a very hyper-modern opening, extremely hyper-modern, where we're getting our bishop here immediately, where it already poses um, some threats and some ideas along this diagonal, already a couple of weaknesses that I'm highlighting. The reason we're playing g5 instead of g6 is because we're motivating this bishop to develop which gives us tempo, because often this bishop doesn't develop as quickly. White focuses on the king side pieces and really solidifies the center by bringing out the bishop to g5. It's not doing much, um, and it basically gives us an extra tempo to more quickly uh, and deadly attack this center. And that's our idea. So in this position, c5, right? Very natural. Hikaru trying to already win the pawn back. If we can win this pawn, we gave away a g pawn for a center pawn. That's a great trade. And so white tries to defend, but now queen b6, and it's already very difficult, in fact, impossible to defend a pawn, right? The, the g7 pawn, uh, or sorry, the b2 pawn is already falling, and also the center is falling here. And so this is how you can really quickly get back your pawn and therefore claim some initiative, and in some cases, an objective advantage from the opening, which is really incredible. Um, now, sure, there's other setups that, you know, the opponent can go for instead of what Hikaru opponent uh, played. You know, they can try uh, to solidify the center more with pieces in the start or in some other ways. You know, they can develop the knight. In some cases, they can try to sacrifice the pawn, maybe bring the bishop back. There's, there's many other ways to play, but the general gist of the, the opening is that white will have to play incredibly passively to hold on to the center and there's cases where it's already impossible as in this line where after c3 again a double attack on these two pawns means we're going to win back the pawn so in this position the opponent took uh, on c5 hoping that hikaru would take here but of course he took instead on b2 and now well it's very dangerous the rooks attacked the pawn is weak especially after the knight moves and now queen takes Knight f3 was played, and queen takes a1, and the opponent resigned in seven moves. And this was a 2,600 rated opponent. And the reason that he missed such an easy attack is because it's very rare that so quickly this bishop is here and already opened up. 
often there's this sort of queen coming in and trying to pose some threats, but by moving the knight, you really usually uh, get rid completely of all of the threats because it's only one queen usually. And so there's also this effect where this bishop is tucked away in the corner. Often it's invisible um, because it's not usually there and and you can get these quick wins uh, like Hikaru did super effortlessly. Now I should mention that white could have improved upon uh, this position. Here knight f3 the engine likes, uh, but after takes takes knight c6, at least practically, it's very difficult to play this position. Notice there's already, because of the trade, there's already some uh, potential issues uh, here if this knight were to ever move. Um, also, there's still, you know, so much pressure in the center and still on this pawn. Both pawns are still attacked. It's very difficult to play. I'll give three options here quickly to show you some of the issues. If you go e5, trying to defend against this pawn, well, suddenly queen takes, and now, I mean, it's again, really difficult. Often the engine likes queen takes when they see that after the knight moves, another piece can take in the center, right? So if you didn't have this knight here, then queen takes would have been a bit premature because you couldn't take back in the center and then there is some issues. But now because of knight takes d4 being possible uh, and this forking idea and the knight just being powerful, this is really, really good for black. Uh, so going back, instead of e5, I mean, knight to c3 is possible. The engine likes this the most. We'll look at this in a second. I want to show you the more natural move, in my opinion. But again, here we can take in the center immediately. Then we'll look to take here. And after something like bishop takes, well, we're going to take here uh, because they have to defend against this as well. I mean, we're just posing all the threats. I mean, I'm sure you guys have noticed this is a fun opening. I mean, we're getting all the initiative, all the fun. It, it's a fun. It's a fun way to play. Now, knight to c3 is objectively best, and the engine gives a, around a plus 7, uh, plus 0.7. <laughs> Big difference there. Plus 0.7 for white, which is not a lot. And again, it's because of the potential uh, energy, as Daniel would say, in this position, right? We have all this pressure in the center. It's cr incredibly difficult to hold on. For example, here, we can, uh, you know, taking here is a little bit... Uh, premature in this position. It would allow the move knight b5. This is a common tactical idea, the one that you really have to watch out for. Now the queen is trapped in some cases, and also there's this huge fork. This is going to be pretty bad. So instead of taking, what you do is take in the center instead, right? And, and that's the beautiful thing. You always have two choices. So if this is too dangerous because of these tactical ideas, take in the center. And after knight takes, bishop takes, again, we have the same thing. This is threatened after which the knight becomes really weak. This is a threat. Uh, here, for example, queen c2 is best, uh, trying to hold on to everything. But now we can swing over our queen to g6, and we can get even more targets. The bishop's attacked. When the bishop moves, knight f6. Now this pawn is attacked. We can, you know, in, in fact, take first and then go knight f6. Now the pawn really is, uh, you know, we're threatening to take it. And they can't defend it. If they go and try to defend it, they lose this pawn. And it's difficult, it truly. Uh, you know, they also can't push this pawn. They lose their queen. That would be uh, quite terrible. It's very difficult to, to orchestrate a way to defend and hold on to the material. And that's what you're going to notice even by just quick games in this line. You're just going to notice that you're down a pawn, but it's nearly impossible for white to hold on to that. Um, and often when you take back the pawn, you still have the initiative, still the pressure, and and the ball is really in your court. And so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think of this opening. I plan to make more opening videos on these offbeat kind of lines. So if you have any requests, I'm not doing this in any particular order. So I'd love to fulfill those. Leave them down below in the comment section. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you're new around here and enjoy this type of content. And I will see you guys next time. Peace out.